Hi guys, welcome to this episode of Going For Your Part, where we talk about classical symptoms application. In the Wing Chun Ba Cha, I'm doing level six form, there are movements where we flip the knife, right? And then we're moving, then we flip the knife again, we flip the knife again. A lot of people don't know what that's for, and more importantly, I notice that when people work in the application, they have a lot of problems making it work. So today we're gonna to solve this problem for you. See you when we get back. In the flipping on a knife, a lot of people think in the middle of a fight, when someone is cutting you with a saber or a spear, you are going to flip your knife in the middle of a fight when a guy swings at you and then block or something, right? Wings and forms, just like all the wings and forms, are principle based. You can't take it literally. There is no way in the middle of a fight when someone is cutting you in the middle of a cut, you're going to flip your knife and do something. Why would you do that if you're already in a forehand grip in a good position? Why would you flip the blade in the middle of a fight? Unlike a fist coming at you, a blade can easily travel 100 to 120 miles an hour. There's no way at that speed, <laughs> in the middle of it, you can flip your knife and do something. People that say that probably has never been really pressure testing this stuff, right? The idea for flipping a knife is very simple. Back in the day, they might be concealing a weapon like this. Or maybe they draw their blade like this. Or maybe it's an improvised weapon and they just grab it. Like a cane, for example, you'd be in this type of grip. And if you are in this grip, there's no way you can tell a guy to stop in the middle of a fight so he can flip it back. That's what these techniques was originally designed for. Not for you to be fancy and start flipping your knife in the middle of a fight when a guy's going 120 miles an hour. So how would you use it if you're in this grip? Obviously, this grip's better. I'm going to give you a few ideas. Christopher, can you please come in? So, if I was in this grip, so that's the first principle. Second is, what if I only have one blade, right? So, if Chris does attack me, I'm going to be very careful with these, even though they're not laser sharp. You can really hurt your training partner. So, I'm going to go an extra slow. You don't have to go slow. Chris, if you come in, right? You can come in this way and use it right away, and that's just to add into the throat or the chest. Or Chris can attack another way. From here, you get a cut here, and you get a cut, or you can go low. You know, you definitely can cut this way and cut this way, right? So that's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is maybe you keep that for a second. I have two blades. Okay. Which is really rare, but in the event that you have one like this and one like this, you should still be able to use it. The same thing when you come to it. You should be able to use it, or another way, this one's going to hurt a little bit. <laughs> Can use it, or if it goes this way, you should be able to use it right away and cut, right? So the idea is because you're actually here, not because in the middle of a fight when Chris swing, I'm gonna flip it in the middle of a swing when that's going 120 miles an hour, that's unrealistic. So this is very important. All right, so you wanna take off the gloves for a second first? This idea of flipping a knife actually goes really well with the cup down on the third form. If Chris attacked the exact same way, this elbow idea can be used really well with the one around. If Chris attacks the same way, this same thing, and the elbows are going around. By me doing this, or Chris goes low, same thing. So the same technique that was used in the knife can also be transferred back in the empty hands. So to solve this problem, it's basically you should be able to use the knife with neither hand, with a forehand grip, or a backhand with all angles. When we get back, we'll talk a bit more about this. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's demo. So there's a, maybe it's not that popular, but it's a Wing Chun principle. When you're learning the weapons, a six and a half point pole is really heavy. It requires two hands to pick it up. When you learn the Pacha Amdo, the Wing Chun knives, is very light, relatively speaking, and it only takes one arm to pick it up. So the general principle is this, which is no longer that popular nowadays, but it was in the old days. And that is, if you can use the pole, which requires two hands to pick up, then automatically you should be able to look around the room and pick up anything that requires two hands hands easily and be able to use it, such as a chair, a table, baseball bat, what have you, right? And the theory is, if you're able to use a bachan, though, then in theory, because it takes one arm to pick up, then you should be able to look around a room, pick up anything that requires one arm, and be able to use it with finesse, like an umbrella, a flashlight, a screwdriver, anything, right? 
as much as this concept's popular, there's one thing saying it and one thing being able to do it. So today I illustrate a little bit of idea. Ideally, you should be able to use a one arm weapon with your left hand or your right hand, both in forehand grip. You should be able to use your weapon in an ice pick grip like I did today with your left hand and your right arm. And you should be able to use the weapon with one arm ice pick, one arm forehand grip and flip it over. You should also be able to use any weapon at any length in any way and pick it up in any grip without looking. Maybe it's forehand, maybe it's ice pick, and then be able to use it with neither hand against all angles of attack. As you can see, to be that adaptive and flexibility requires a lot of problems to be solved and a lot of layering of training. If you are interested in that kind of progressive training, please go to adamchenkungfu.com and we have level six coming up very soon. All right, guys, see you next time.